Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another installment of Talking Trees with Lee. My name is Lee Rumble, and I am your Knox County Extension Agent and ISA Certified Arborist. Now, last week we talked about early spring flowering trees and their beautiful flowers, but this week I'd like to talk to you about oak trees and the development of their acorns. Now, you may say acorns aren't on my tree yet, and you'd be correct, but for oak trees, as the leaves begin to unfurl, flower buds will also begin to expand and bloom. And it is these flowers that will ultimately lead to a new crop of acorns. Now, worldwide, there are more than 500 species of oak, but in Tennessee, only 20 species are present. Eight are in the white oak group and 12 are in the red oak group. Oaks, along with many other tree species, are what are known as monoecious meaning that both male and female flowers are born on the same tree, allowing in many cases for self-fertilization. By April, along with our rising temperatures, many of our oak species will have begun to develop downward drooping structures. These male flowers are known as catkins. While you may not regularly see these, pollen sufferers certainly know when they are present. The pollen from these male flowers, the catkins, will be shed one to two weeks after their development, usually over a period of just three to four days. In fact, this morning I looked at the pollen count for Knoxville, Tennessee, and tree pollen was listed as very high with no sign of relief for the next 14 days. Much of this count is heavily influenced by oak pollen. Female flowers, which are receptive to this pollen, are born about a week after male flowers, time just as pollen is beginning to shed. Interestingly, the casual observer may never see a single female flower on an oak tree. Not only are they extremely small, oftentimes these flowers are found in the upper portions of the canopy and well out of eyesight. While the pollen loads produced by oak trees may affect some of us, male catkins depend on wind dispersal to fertilize female flowers. Have you ever wondered why some years acorn crop production is greatly reduced while other years are overly abundant? Well, first, it's important to know that year-to-year -year acorn production is very unpredictable. External factors such as wind, rains, freezing temperatures, tree health, and soil moisture can all negatively impact acorn production. In addition to this, oaks are considered a hard mass species, meaning that on average, two out of every 10 years will be mashed years. This leads to an overabundance of acorns. If you have an oak tree in your yard, you have likely witnessed this. But keep in mind, the chances of these numerous acorns on the ground developing into a mighty oak tree are still very low. Not only is germination of acorns a fine balance of environmental factors, acorns are also an important food source for blue jays, turkeys, squirrels, chipmunks, deer, and even black bears. We have a long and rich history with oak species, not only here in North America, but worldwide. And since many of our oak species are slow growing individuals, I will just leave you with the Chinese proverb that states, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Should you need help in determining the best species for your yard, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I've included my contact information at the end of this video, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you all for watching today. I hope you have a great rest of your week.